الله الرحمن الرحيم ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وانت خير الفاتحين صدق الله العظيم يسعدني ويشرفني حضور العظيم من اساتذتي وزملائي من مختلف انحاء العالم معنا البروفيسور بانيوتس Paleotis is an eminent hand and microsurgery from Greece. He will known all over the world and he come to Egypt and to our meeting and hear a lot of difficulties and the traveling from Greece till here. And also we have a Professor Rotterman, he is a well-known hand and microsurgery from Netherlands. Uh, and uh, my professor, Tarek Gamal, who learned me a lot, he always uh, support us, he always uh, stay with us in the conference in opening uh, our unit. And uh, actually, uh, I give him a lot of thanks. And uh, for you too, uh, I thank all you, because this uh, conference will not be held without you. And uh, I have uh, a death show uh, shortly. This is uh, the seventh annual conference of hand micro surgery unit. Uh, the first annual congress was in Swag, and uh, we, we were uh, younger, and now we get older. So this was seven years ago in Swag. This was the first annual congress. Second was in Suhaib 2, 2009. And we have a lot of professors. Yes. And the third one was in Suhaib in 2010, six years ago. And fourth was in Haggadah in Serenity 2013. And we have a lot, we had a lot of imminent uh, hand and microsurgery all over the world. And the fifth was in Hargada, Schreckenberger. We, we had imminent hand and microsurgery. Six was in Movendi. And today we have the seventh annual Congress of Hand and Microsurgery in Brunei. I hope to stay uh, and to uh, share uh, our knowledge. And this will be uh, a new because we have a workshop, an experimental workshop in Swahak in our unit uh, in March 2016. And uh, we will do another one in March 2017. In our unit, which uh, opened by a well known uh, professor, uh, is uh, Georgescu, and share us with the opening and uh, with the surgery, life surgery, and the also our professor, Tariq Gamal, shared us too. And I, I would like to thank uh, my team. And without this team, there was no work, no conference. Okay. <coughs> and uh, last but not least, we uh, missed uh, uh, our professor, which was uh, uh, the second one in orthopedic department, Swag University. And please, we can stand one minute for his soul, Dr. Muhammad Alam Deen. Here's the second man behind me on the left side. Yes. Okay, thank you. And I would like to express my gratitude and thank you for uh, uh, a company who helped us with money. Abbott, 
e, Pfizer, Sandus, Novartis, Arm, Everus, e, Nirhedu, Delta Farm, Epico, e, and uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, Extreme, the organizing company, for the previous year and this year, and I hope to con they continue with us. Okay, next. And thank you. Talking about necrosis of the subcrotal bone, because this is the pathology behind of the femoral head, we mean that uh, this is equal to death of two major and essential elements of the femoral head. Number one, the bone structure. Number two, the bone marrow. And this goes and proceeds to the ischemic necrosis of the femoral head with final result, the osteochondrosis and, of course, degenerative osteoarthritis. So the treatment algorithm that we have to go through in order to establish the most uh, successful uh, treatment modality has to go through the pathophysiology and the causative factors of the disease, number one. Number two, the natural history of the disease and the staging uh, of uh, the disease which go through. And of course, all the consequences which are related with the surgical method will decide to follow. So regarding etiology, you all know what is going behind. And in order to make the long story through, uh, tr uh, uh, the long story short, number one are the steroid administration, no question about that. And again, all those factors which influence the lumen of the small vessels, which uh, disturb <coughs> the blood flow to the femoral head with a final result, the necrosis of the subquadral bone. No question about al alcoholism, no question about some other metabolic diseases like hyperlipidemia, sickle cell, autoimmune disease, and let me tell you, uh, recently, for the during the last five, 10 years, we have found another group of patients who are those, the HIV patients, who undergo ret antiretroviral uh, treatment. This has been proved and has been presented in the bi bibliography. That is a causative factor for uh, the osteonecrosis of the femoral head. So anything which is not included in all this uh, classification as a causative factor, we call it idiopathic. That means we don't know what it, the causative factor is. Needless to say that the most vulnerable anatomical area is the femoral head, which is followed but the medial femoral condyle in the knee area and the humeral head. So the disease process, like I said before, starts with the ischemic, ischemic insult in the femoral head. Then the effort by the, uh, by the body of the patient to revascularize and repair the necrotic area 
And if this is if this is not succeeded, then the final result the result is the flattening of the uh, of the femoral head, depression, and of course deformity. The statistics which are known about this that this is something which is related to disease syndrome, which is related to young people population. Average age, average age less than 40 uh, years. And one fourth, 25% of those are less than 25 years. So it's very important to deal with that issue. We all know that even it's approximately close to 20% that the disease per se is responsible for more than 500,000 total hip replacements per year in America and Europe. And on the top of that, more than 20,000 new cases have to be dealt by orthopedic surgeons. So, in order to detect the disease and make a final diagnosis, we have to take into account if the femoral head reserves and preserves its spherical anatomical uh, figure. That means uh, how is the integrity of the femoral head? That means there's no any flattening present or collapse of the femoral head because of the process of the subcortical bone. And then how extended is the size of the lesion? And again, if because of those uh, deformities and, uh, uh, and degenerative changes, if there is uh, uh, involvement of the acetabular wall as well. So there are several staging methods. Well, permit me to say that I have, I'm favoring the Steinberg procedure. This is the method of staging uh, which I follow for the last uh, 30 years. But let me remind you, uh, let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing that we have to identify is whether we deal with a case of pre-collapse stage and post-collapse stage. Pre-collapse means that the subcultural plate is intact, no crack. If there is a crack of the subcultural plate, that means there is no any more uh, ability from the subcultural bone to support the articular surface, which is fl it gets flattened and depressed. This is a very important thing to remember, post, pre, and post collapse uh, cases. So stage uh, zero, according to Steinberg classification, is plain x-rays are always, always normal. Plain x-rays are always normal. However, if we are familiar with the disease and we listen to the patient, then uh, if we order does not support the articular cartilage and the, uh, the, the worst thing is that weakens the subcortical plate. And like I said, I have operated patients who are doing well uh, as stage one or two and after the cortical compression, everything uh, collapsed. Should Gioca, I know should Gioca by, uh, uh, on a personal base, he's, he was a brilliant orthopedic surgeon. He demonstrated this osteotomy, but everyone admits that it's the best to his hands only. No one is, uh, is using that type of, because it's very complicated, difficult, very demanding, and never became a popular uh, procedure for the middle microsurgeon or orthopedic surgeon to uh, use it. I like to do a CSC collagen for only a few margin of the uh, services, the obesity, the and the adjacent ramus 
of its skin. Insertion medial surface of tibial shaft, GS O02 sartorius. Here you can see this is Galaxilis, this is the origin, and far away its insertion. Action, abduction of the side at the hip, assist with internal rotation of the side at the hip, assist with flexion of the side at the hip. Innervation until division of the obturator nerve, the blood supply obturator artery from the internal iliac artery. As a guard, we used it for functioning free gallocytes muscle transfer or for soft tissue coverage. Functioning free muscle indications trauma, brachiaplexus injury, Volkmann's ischemic contracture, tumor, congenital deficiencies. Indications, deficiency of critical motor function with no suitable tendon transfer options, no suitable rotational muscle transfer, soft tissue defect requiring coverage in combination with functional loss. The goals, ensure an adequate viable coverage for a soft tissue defect, supply a useful range of motion, provide adequate strength for functional activities. General considerations, expendable donor muscle, sacrifice to the acceptable donor site morbidity, adequate lens and execution for new function, sufficient force, vascular medical permits transfer. Surgical technique, the patient lying supine, the hip is internal rotated and deflexed. We can do remark on the, on the muscle from proximal to distal, we can palpate a biopic tubercle uh, uh, here and SGS and we can use it uh, alone or with a, a, a skin uh, uh, flat to monitoring the vascular, uh, vascularity after the surgery. We use it, usually we use it with the skin bedding for monitoring. Here you can see this is the muscle after uh, uh, free it from the superior surface and here you can see the muscle. This after raising the muscle with the skin. And the case presentation we present some cases. In this case, you can see this uh, patient subjected to motor car accident. You see five fingers lost connection with the uh, forearm as regards the tendons, the vessels, and everything here is injured. And this case is beyond uh, uh, replantation, and it is considered as irreparable. We have to do a tendon graft, nerve graft, and vascularity. And after this, you have to cover it. Otherwise, amputation will be up to here, mid for all. This after coverage, and this is intraoperative monitoring. Here you can see the blood coming from the, the graft. And this is considered as 12 months post-operative. The patient can do extension, flexion, and he can use the key, uh, remote control. Uh, thank you.